Hi, my name is Dr. John Duyard, and welcome to LifeSpot.com, where we prove ancient medical wisdom with modern science. And today, I want to talk to you about um, the dangers of a gluten-free diet. Now, I know that everybody thinks that we should be gluten-free, and gluten is a poison, and that's what we hear a lot about. And I also want to mention that this, that we have a $16 billion a year gluten-free industry, which is no doubt helping you make decisions in the grocery store to buy a gluten-free product, which by the way is a highly processed product. And, um, you know, of course I wrote a book called Eat Wheat. So, and it wasn't that I want everybody to go and eat wheat. It wasn't the point of the book. It's just that, and I also get it that when a lot of people do eat wheat, they don't feel wonderful. They feel bloated, they gain weight, they have indigestion, they have brain fog, their skin might break out. I understand that. And I also understand why all that is happening. But just taking the wheat out of the diet doesn't actually fix the problem. What it does is it just treats the symptom of a bigger problem. And that bigger problem, like all problems, they don't go away. They come back to haunt you down the road, maybe years later just like when they took cholesterol out of our diet in 1960 and they replaced that, those saturated fats with polyunsaturated fatty acids, colonial oil, sunflower oil, cooked, bleached, boiled, deodorized vegetable oils, which are very unstable. And they put it in loaves of bread and they put it in packaged foods and it would preserve them, mostly because the microbes won't eat the polyunsaturated, highly processed oils that are in everything. And as a result, all those oils, when you, when you put it in a loaf of bread and the bread stays squishy on the shelf for a month, the, the bugs won't eat it. But bread used to go bad in a day, and now it goes bad in a month, if ever. And when you put that bread in your mouth, the oils won't be digested either because the bugs won't eat it on the counter, and they won't eat it in your gut. So where does it all go? It goes to your liver and causes liver congestion, bile flow issues. The number one abdominal surgery today in America, gallbladder removal surgery. Gallbladder is the kingpin, the bile flow, is the kingpin of your digestive strength. Simply put, if the bile and liver is congested because of years of processed food, and we're being told now by the $16 billion a year industry, we should eat more of those highly processed foods, then the liver gets congested and the bile won't be as robust as it once was. And the bile is a neutralizer for the acid in your stomach. So if you have liver congestion or bile flow issues, which is usually manifest as having heartburn or indigestion or constipation or sensitivity to foods, any of those things, then oftentimes you're going to have a difficulty digesting wheat because wheat is a hard to digest protein, as are nuts and seeds and beans and the legumes. And those require a very strong acid in your stomach, but your stomach won't make that acid unless there's an adequate amount of bile to neutralize that acid. So no bile, no acid, no acid. You're not going to digest wheat very well. Okay, so you stop eating wheat. But what about the grains and the nuts and the seeds and the beans and the legumes? What about the mercury from the coal mine plumes on every organic vegetable? That All of that requires a very strong digestive system because your ability to digest well is also linked to your ability to detoxify well. And if you can't detoxify well in a world where we dump 400 billion pounds of toxic chemicals in the American environment every single year, and you have mercury on every organic vegetable that you can't wash off, you better make sure that we do something to reboot and strengthen our digestive system, which would include getting off the processed foods for sure. Eat as much organic food as you can because the pesticides that we spray on these foods kill the bugs that make the enzymes to help us digest things like wheat. And I'm not talking about Wonder Bread, I'm talking about really good whole wheat, which has been shown in study after study after study. In my Eat Wheat book, there's 600 scientific references showing that wheat actually is, can be very, very beneficial. It lowers the risk of Alzheimer's and uh, by 53 and 54% in both the Mediterranean diet and the Mind diet. In study after study, it shows it lowers the risk of diabetes significantly. In two massively large studies, Harvard studies, over 30 years in the making, over 100,000 people per study, both studies show that people who eat the most wheat have significantly less heart disease. And the other study, people who eat the most wheat compared to people who are gluten-free have significantly less risk of diabetes. So that just flies in the face of 
what the gluten-free industry is telling us, that wheat causes diabetes and wheat causes Alzheimer's. It doesn't. What does, though, is a broken down digestive system, and you overeat highly processed wheat three times a day for 60 years, the wheat will not be broken down. The molecule, instead of being broken down in a really strong acid stomach, will go undigested into your small intestine. And it'll find its way into the collecting ducts of your lymphatic system because the molecule is too big now to get into your bloodstream where it should go because it wasn't broken down properly because of a poor digestive system because of lack of bile. No bile, no acid, no acid. You don't break down the wheat. The wheat goes into your intestinal tract, too big to get into your blood. Where does it go? Into your lymph. And all of the symptoms related to wheat issues relate to lymphatic congestion. Skin rashes, there's skin-related lymph issues, bloating around your belly. There's, that's the, the, where most of the lymph in the body is, is around your belly, around your intestinal tract. Uh, joint achiness is lymph congestion. Brain fog, there's newly discovered lymphs in the brain that don't drain well when the lymph system is congested and cause brain fog. And when I did the debate with David Perlmutter, author of Brain Grain, I made it very clear to him that it's not a brain grain issue. It's a brain drain issue due to upstream poor digestion. And, and of course, my mother said that I won that debate. So I'm sure you should, you could all watch it and decide for yourself and let me know if you think my mother was right. Uh, but at the end of that debate, he clearly said that it really is about digestive strength, which is, you know, shocking for him to admit that, um, which I think is very important because that's what we're not doing is we're not fixing the real problem. So, let me explain to you why being on a gluten-free diet when you maybe don't have to be is actually potentially dangerous. The same kind of danger that took place when we took cholesterol out of our diet in 1960. And because of liver congestion and bile sludge and poor digestive strength due to that, we have epidemics of liver-related concerns. Type 2 diabetes is a liver concern, first and foremost, not a pancreatic issue. Obesity is the inability to deliver fat, get rid of fats and burn fat. And depression, anxiety, mood-related concerns, the brain feeds on fat to keep it stable. So we're digging out of epidemics of those conditions because of what happened 60 years ago in 1960. And now we're starting a whole new trend of eating, being told we should eat highly processed food and getting off the grains. They have lectins in them that are poisonous. Well, for every study they show a lectin is problematic, their studies show that lectins actually reverse colon cancers and have really healthy benefits. So the, the, the problem is, is we were never, we were, we were, we have millions of years of genetics to digest these harder to digest things. And those harder to digest foods, the anti-nutrients, the lectins and the phytic acids on these grains, including wheat, they're immune triggers. And when you take away the immune stimulation, you end up with immune compromise. And here's what the science has recently shown. People who are gluten-free have significantly more mercury, four times more mercury in their blood than people who eat wheat. In another study, people who are gluten-free have significantly less good bacteria and more bad bacteria in their gut than people who are eating wheat. And people who are gluten-free have less amount of killer T cells, a measure of immunity, than people who actually eat wheat. All of those studies suggesting that when you take all the hard to digest stuff out, we begin to see an alteration of the microbiology, a inability to detoxify, more mercury in our bloodstream, and of course, significantly less killer T cells, a measure of immune strength. So is that where we really want to go? If that's already the science showing, is that what's going to happen in the next 50, 60 years when we have a digestive problem? We just say, oh, don't eat wheat, don't eat dairy, don't eat grains, don't eat nuts, don't eat seeds. All of a sudden, we've taken everything out of our diet that triggers gut immunity, the things that irritate, stimulate the gut. This is how we got here. Three and a half million years ago, they found gluten in the teeth of ancient humans. We've been eating grains. Africa was covered with grasslands of wheat and barley. We've been eating grains for a very, very, very long time. When they started hybridizing the wheat 12,000 years ago, everybody says that was the beginning of the end. They actually hybridized and selected wheat that had less gluten and more sugar because they wanted the grain to be bigger so they could see it. And when they smack it on the ground to harvest it and thresh it, 
they could actually find the little tiny wheat berry. So they, they selected the grains for the bigger, which was more sugar and less gluten. So when they began hybridizing wheat the very first time, 12,000 years ago, they selected for less gluten, not more. Millions of years prior to that, they absolutely were eating grain because Africa was covered in grain. And somewhere around two million, two million years ago, we acquired a gene to make an enzyme called amylase. That en enzyme called amylase is a starch digesting enzyme. Uh, the deficiency in, in that enzyme is causes, is cause, causes Baker's asthma, an allergy to wheat. So we have the ability to digest starch. That's why we acquired a gene to digest it. Not because we never ate it and we only ate vegetables and meat, it's because we actually ate significantly amount of it. One study at University of Utah said that we can eat, we can actually harvest enough wheat berries for an entire day in just two hours. So that's a pretty simple way to eat, just two hours of harvesting and the rest of the day you're sitting around eating, which is a, a really uh, interesting concept that we did eat starch. And now we know that the amylase is a seasonal enzyme. It increases in our body in the fall. Guess what? When all the starches are harvested, all the grains are harvested, and it depletes in our body in the spring and the summer. So right now, as we make this video, we are in a no wheat season. So it would be a good idea to be gluten-free and wheat-free and very minimal grain-free this time of the year and eat way more of your leafy greens and sprouts and vegetables. And this is when we should become, uh, we, we reset our ability to burn fat. And I'm gonna be doing a, a podcast on the ketogenic diet, the Ayurvedic approach to a ketogenic diet uh, and coming up very, very soon, uh, early next month. So, so please stay tuned for that. That's very, very important to, to understand how Ayurveda and traditional people actually became ketogenic. And yes, this is the no grain, no wheat season, and it's a great time to reset digestive strength and your ability to burn fat. So anyway, I hope that helps. You can, you know, in my book, Eat Wheat, I actually go through a troubleshooting guide so you can find out exactly where your digestion broke down and exactly how to fix that problem. So you don't have to take, continue to take more and more and more food out of your diet. And sooner rather than later, we find ourselves not having a whole lot of foods left to eat. That is a road I don't want you to go down. So uh, check me out. More information about this on my book, Eat Wheat, and also uh, at lifespa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Dr. John Duyard.